time. Make it so. It's me, Mario. I'm Batman. Strong am I with the force. Are you telling me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? You're a wizard, Harry. And welcome to World War G episode 168. I'm Troy. I'm AJ. And I'm Colton. Um, this episode feels different. Doesn't it? Does it feel different to you guys? It's probably because we're filming, that, like, recording that during normal hours. Yeah. Yeah. It was hard getting here because I had to cover myself with a sunproof blanket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't burst into flames. <laughs> you are more of a nocturnal kind of person, huh? Mm-hmm. I'm I'm slowly turning into one here pretty quick. Yeah, with your yeah. new work yeah. schedule. Working graves will do that. I work with all the weirdos now. And, uh, the people that uh, you meet at like two in the morning at Walmart. Mm-hmm. You know? No, because they're at work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So we got a call on our. We need like a uh, some sort of name for our phone line. Like how people call Batman on the bat phone. Mm-hmm. Or Ghostbusters. Yeah. Call like the... Cat phone. The Colton, AJ, and Troy phone. Hey. Whoa. Matt, that was just off the cuff right there. That. that was pretty impressive. Should be in advertising. <laughs> so let's call it that. Okay, we'll call it the cat phone. That's Boom. more applicable now than ever. And it starts with me. Um, <laughs> so let me play that for you. This is, uh, Brandon from the fandom podcast, uh, which you can find at, I should probably look up his website so I can plug him. Uh, we'll do that right after the call, but here you go. Hey guys, this is Brandon from the fandom podcast. So I always get a laugh when you do a taste test from some random crazy food that's advertised. If you could get your hands on any fictional food for a taste test, which one would it be? Thanks. Keep up the good work. So, yeah. Um, that was Brandon from the Fandom Podcast. FandomPodcast.com. Go check them out. So, what do you guys think? Fictional foods. What comes to mind? Honestly, I've always wanted to try the Polyjuice Potion from Harry Potter. Mm. Even though everyone says it's disgusting, but... Harry Potter, Harry Potter's full of stuff like that. I mean, you got Bernie bots, every flavor of bean. Yeah, you got butter beer. Yeah, the chocolate one. What's the frog? Chocolate frogs. Mm -hmm. Liquid luck. Liquid luck. Yep. I definitely want to get me some of that. Right. Uh, You'd also mention Willy Wonka. Yeah, Willy Wonka. That whole show Mm -hmm. lends itself to a ton of flower petals. Mm -hmm. A teacup. Yep. I'll eat a teacup. Chocolate. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You're like, I'd eat the hell out of a teacup. Um, yeah, for me, that everlasting gobstopper, right? Because we have those, but they don't look like what they did in the movie. And they don't last forever. They do not. Yeah. False advertising. Well, they don't say forever lasting. Oh. <laughs> True. But, right, in, in the movie, he said that they lasted literally forever. Right. I guess that's true. For children with very little pocket money. Oh, look at him being all, like, thoughtful mm-hmm. and whatnot. I always wanted to lick a wall. Oh, oh yeah! And, uh, <laughs> oh, and also the, oh, what, yeah, the yeah. windows of the bus don't do it for you. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, honestly, the just looking at that Ninja Turtles poster there, those pizzas they always had look really good. Ooh, Even the like pizza? the bizarre ones that Michelangelo would create. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like making mushroom and gumdrop. I'm like, that's that could yeah. be all right. <laughs> I I try that. Or the pizza and the cheese from a goofy movie. Uh, the goofy, the second goofy uh, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's the Leaning Tower of Jesus. They make cheese look so good. I don't know yeah, what they do. It's just delicious looking. It's delicious tasting too. <laughs> I mean, I would say Reptar bars, but we tried those, and those They're were freaking disgusting, nasty. I've also tried Buzz Cola from The Simpsons, because um, Seven Eleven turned into the Quickie Mart there for a while when The Simpsons movie came out. So I tried that, bought myself a six pack. Along with the donuts? I did have one of the donuts. Yep, the pink, pink donuts. Buzz Cola, it it's very uh basic. 
Buzzcola, you basic. Yeah. Oh, thinking back, I actually did try butterbeer from Harry Potter. You can find that at the candy store at the Farmington Station. Oh, okay. Yeah. The one that I've always talked about and always wanted to try, gummy berry juice. Oh, yeah. That would have been so dang delicious. Chocolate frogs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, man, there's a lot. Uh, I'm trying to think of some others. Um, oh, uh, Lembus bread from Lord of the Rings. Ooh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah? I, I imagine it tasting like a garlicky, salty, like a... Um, Hard tack kind of bread. Well, I was thinking more like a graham cracker, but the opposite... Like, not sweet, but savory. Yeah. See, I always just thought it's like <clears throat> what you were saying. It's like a, kind of a hard bread, almost like a cracker type mm-hmm. of a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I always thought that well, was well, they Don't they have that? I mean, it is called hardtack for, like, when you go sailing. You right. know, like, that's what they kept because it didn't go bad. Yeah. They just didn't use, like, yeast or anything else. It's going to really ruin the bread. Yeah. All right. Well, there's some of, some of ours. Um, if you guys can think of any more that you want to try, uh, go ahead and... Leave us a comment on the Facebook page or yeah, wherever. I'll, I'll even throw it up on World War G2. Yeah. Um, all right. So, since we've been talking about that, uh, we have had these Blaze Doritos now here in this room for probably about four weeks. Since, since the, the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Well, Jinx, one of the five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bam. You owe me a Coke. That's <laughs> two now. <laughs> <laughs> So, we were waiting until we could find the Mountain Dew Ice. Because that's what the whole Peter Dinklage, Morgan Freeman commercial was about, is them playing off of each other. So, it's like, well, you have to have both of them. You can't, like, eat these Doritos Mm -hmm. without washing it down with some ice, Mountain Dew. But But we couldn't find it anywhere. So, let's bust these open. Give these a try. So, they are Doritos Blaze. I'm guessing they're going to be spicy. Yep, they're going to be spicy. Mm. Holy cow. Yeah, yeah. That'll punch you in the face. We can handle spicy, though. We did the spicy noodle challenge. Mm -hmm. You guys handled it better than I did. I still eat them on the regular. Yeah. Like, helps to keep them regular, too. (laughs) (laughs) Just pushes everything through. Wait, yours isn't as dark as mine. Oh, wow, you really... I got a real spicy one. Look how dark (laughs) it is. on there. All right, so just looking at it, they smell like, I know that's, it's like, ow, ta- tackies, talkies? No, they smell like the uh, the spicy sweet chili Doritos. Yes. They also yeah, come yeah, in a purple yeah, bag. Yeah, 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 That's probably what they are. They just put yeah, blaze. Added, added some more spice yeah. to it. All right, let's dive in here. They're more it's, chili-esque. Mm-hmm. Like taco seasoning. Yeah. <laughs> on a Dorito. But mixed with that spicy sweet chili. I like it. Not as spicy as I thought it'd be. I'm perfectly honest. I mean, you get a little bit. <clears throat> Don't inhale it. <laughs> I wish they were quieter. <clears throat> wow. I wish they were quieter so we could eat them throughout the episode. <laughs> right? Um... <laughs> I'm just trying to look at the ingredients here. So I'm sure. Oh, it just says spices. That's all it says for ingredients. That's well, that's one. Ingredient. That's one of the ingredients. Just spices: garlic powder, monosodium glutamate, mm. onion powder, tomato powder, jalapeno pepper powder. That's fun to say. Jalapeno pepper powder. Artificial color and blah blah. Yeah, there you go. I think those would be really good with like um, cottage cheese. Yes, mm. for sure. A little little cooling. Everyone thinks I'm there. weird for saying that cotto cheese, cotto cheese, cotto cheese, cheese, cheese and nacho <laughs> cheese Doritos are like disgusting to put together. But basically, use the chip as your spoon, and you got a meal. Yeah. Also, what I do, you take those spicy uh, Cheetos fries, dip those in some sour cream. Delicious. Really? Mm. Oh yeah. Sounds pretty good. It ends up turning your sour cream pink, but eh. it's still good. All right. Oh yeah, that's I I like those. Out of uh I don't even know what to rate it out of um, five triangular tortillas. <laughs> <laughs> that's a tongue twister. <laughs> um I mean I'm I'm a fan of just normal regular Doritos. Yeah. Cheese. They've always been like my favorite. Um I'm personally a fan of cool ranch. Yeah. Yeah. 
So out of out of five, I'd give those two um, and a half. I was thinking three. Okay. Yeah. See, I like I like to mix it up a lot, so I'll never buy the same bag of chips twice. Like even though I really like nacho cheese, but I never buy like more than one bag, so I change it up. So I'd probably get these again, like and have them part of my regular rotation. So I'd say four. Mm-hmm. You have a regular rotation of chips that you buy? Yeah. Oh. Just like the little tiny baggies when I go to the gas station, though. It's okay. like, well, I had Funyuns this week. They are in the rotation. That, so now I got to have some Cheetos. Cheetos. <laughs> and then mix it up with the Doritos. Regular Cheetos. And all the other Eto's rotation. family. Mm. Has to be flaming Hot. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, well, let's take a break because uh, I'm going to need some water after that. And we come back. We got our news. Uh, we got all. We got a lot of stories in the news that we got to get through. With excellent segues. Mm-hmm. Oh, we some of the best segues I think we've had in a while. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This this pretty much writes itself. Yeah. So look forward to that. Look forward to the segues. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back right after this. After these messages, we'll be right back. Yeah. On the historic streets of Ogden, there are two kinds of people readers and non-readers here's where you can find their stories booked on 25th street located at 147 historic 25th street ogden utah 84401 yeah stop by and say hi to our friend marcy you can pick up a new or used book or you can sell your own used books that's right you can get 10 percent store credit on what they can sell the book for Stop in and say hi, or call them at 801-529-7720. You can find them on Facebook at facebook.com slash booked on 25th, or you can email them at marcy at booked on 25th.com, or visit their website, booked on 25th.com. Be sure to tell them that World War G sent you. Now back to the episode. And we're back. So, I have kind of an interesting list here. Um, One of the things I can't stand about fandom and the fanboys is that when they hear a casting, they immediately decide that it's going to be bad. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Without even giving them, like, a chance or prove me wrong kind of a mentality, it's like, nope, they cannot do it. Yeah. They are not who I thought should play this part. But so it's then, not good. Yeah, then the person comes and it's one of the best performances of that character. It's like, oh, this is awesome. And then something else happens, another casting news, and they go right back to it. Well, and it's especially bad when someone is already like an established person, like Christian Bale Batman. Yeah. Like he to in my my eyes will always be Batman. Mm-hmm. And I was not a fan of Batfleck. Hmm. But. Yeah, I didn't mind Ben Affleck as Batman. It's it's difficult because you get both sides of the spectrum, but you really don't ever be like, yeah, I could see that person, you know? Uh, like, very rarely do you hear anybody be like, okay, yeah, that's a really good choice. Mm. You know, it's either uh, you have strong feelings pro or con. Yeah. So, here are ten times fans were wrong about casting. Number ten, Heath Ledger. The oh. Joker. Yeah, they got that wrong completely. Yeah, because all they saw was the guy from, you know, 10 Things I Hate About You and Brokeback Mountain. And they were tale. like, well, they're going to play Joker gay. That's that's what I heard a lot. See, and that's funny because I never saw those two movies yeah. before seeing The Dark Knight. Yeah. And now they talk about how Heath Ledger's performance is like the definitive Joker. Like, that's think, what we want. Yeah. I mean, not to speak ill of the dead, but do you, you think, think a lot be- of it has Probably. to do with that? Maybe, like, maybe a little bit. I mean, he did a, like, a standout like performance. There, That is part of it, yes, but he, it, it, his just his performance and his whole demeanor. Yeah, and his mannerisms. I mean, he, he thought about every inch of that character. Yeah, and the thing was, it wasn't Heath Ledger playing the Joker. It was the Joker. Yeah. And which is probably one of the reasons he yeah. died. That and then the old twins. <laughs> the old twins. <laughs> I've said that before, There's... but I hope one of them OD so I can tell them apart. 
I I can well, tell which not. one. They both already look dead. Yeah, I know. They, they look like Skeletor. I've been able to tell them apart for quite some time, honestly. Um, okay, number nine. Gal Gadot, Wonder Woman. Yeah, I did. I think I did have my skepticism about her just because I'd not seen her in anything, as well as her accent. I thought it was going to be off putting. You know, I was going to be focusing too much on the accent. You know, the funny thing is, is because that accent, they then had all the other actresses in Wonder Woman, Aunt Themyscira, all have that same accent. Mm hmm. They purposely did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of the complaints were she wasn't strong enough. She was too skinny. Um, she was in the military. You yeah, know? yeah, exactly. Gymnast kind of a yeah. thing. I even heard people say, oh, her, her boobs are too small. I'm like, really? <laughs> really? Wow. And yet I was They can surprised. fix that in post. That's true. <clears throat> if they can get rid of a mustache on Superman, <laughs> you know, they can make Wonder Woman's breasts bigger. Um, number eight, Daniel Craig, James Bond. Remember this too. And the reason why he has blonde hair. Yeah. That is the, I, only... I, that was the biggest complaint yeah. I remember hearing as well. See, I was too young to be worried about it because to me, he was the first James Bond. See, Pierce Brosnan to me. <laughs> I know yeah. guys, I'm young. Troy's <laughs> rolling his eyes at me. Exa yeah. He's already done this with the Christian Bale is the definitive <laughs> Batman. I'm like there's quite a few before him, but like, all right. But, but no, I, I agree with you. Pierce Brosnan mm -hmm. was my first first Bond. Um, he was your first Bond? He took your Bond and Cherry? He did. He bonded oh. to him? <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah, and, and Daniel Craig, I mean, he's probably the closest. I've said it before on other episodes, but he's the closest to the the novels of James Bond. Oh, yeah. I, you know, absolutely. James yeah, James Bond was never this suave, debonair you know, um, type of, of spy. He was womanizer. a yeah, womanizer. He was, yeah. he was a blunt instrument. Exactly. He, a means he to was an the end. Guy that yeah. called to get things done. Yes. Uh, number seven. And we just talked about it. Ben Affleck is Batman. Now, I can't remember what the complaints were with this one. A lot of it has to do with Ben Affleck's, his personality. Mm -hmm. um, he, he'd never done a movie like this before, except for was Daredevil. Well, Daredevil and then The Accountant. Like, mm. he was, like, he hadn't really gotten into the action movie scene. Yeah, and I think people thought about Daredevil, and it wasn't the greatest movie. No. And not so, at all. no. They thought, oh, he's going to ruin Batman just like he did Daredevil, and some people think he still did ruin Batman. I personally think he was fine. I think DC is ruining Batman. He, well, you got a point there. Kind of, it's, it's kind of strange <clears throat> because we're so used to Christian Bell's Batman and how many years he played Batman. Yeah. And then Ben Affleck's already about ready to take off the mm -hmm. cowl and call it quit. You know? Yep. Um, and. A lot of other complaints were, but yeah, like like you were saying, Colton, a bunch of his uh, movies, people didn't didn't see him as uh, um, as an action hero. Much like number six, Michael Keaton as Batman. Now, I was too young, and we were too young to remember this, right? <laughs> Roll your eyes, <laughs> making fun of me. Um, but yeah, Michael Keaton was known as a comedian. A comedic actor. Right. Uh, I mean, he always, he did Mr. Mom, he did Beetlejuice before Batman. And so a lot of people thought that there's there's no way that he can pull it off. And I, I really like those and appreciate those surprise roles. You know, you get these characters that are typically known for one thing, and then they're able to do a serious role mm -hmm. or an action movie, and they actually knock it out of the park, and you're like, wait, okay. I don't know, it gives you a new appreciation for them. It's funny, because we don't actually see them as actors, and that's literally the definition yeah. of actor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, number five, Robert Downey Jr. as Sherlock Holmes. Mm -hmm. I was a doubter. I didn't have any um, Reser feelings. Reservations. Yeah. Even worse than that was Bumble Snuff Crumpy Bunch being, uh, or Benedict Cumberbatch being Sherlock Holmes. Um, 
because I was so used to Robert Downey Jr. at that point. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as Benedict came on the scene, I was like, no, like, I mean, he's con to me now. Right, yeah. But yeah, no. I, I actually think I like the Benedict Cumberbatch one better. But to me and, now, uh, he's he's Doctor Strange. Yeah, that's true. That's very yeah. true. Bumper shoot, boot and scoot. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, Robert Downey Jr. is a fine Sherlock Holmes. His his English accent isn't great. Yeah, it wasn't um, amazing, but but it, 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 I did like fine. a more action packed. Um, Sherlock Holmes, mm -hmm. and he was really sarcastic. They they really messed yeah. it up when they did that one. Do you remember um, what was it? The Three Musketeers that so they tried to do like a action one, and it just oh, fell yeah. short. And was horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was my only. It wasn't like with him, Robert Downey Jr. It was more of with an action packed Sherlock Holmes mm -hmm. that I was skeptical about. Yeah, but it worked. Yeah. Number four, Hugh Jackman. Wolverine. I actually remember this because he wasn't a buff guy. He was he was skinny. He was tall. Uh, two things that Wolverine is not. Mm -hmm. He's also Australian. Um, I know, right? Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Stay down under. <laughs> Don't come up. <laughs> Stay over there. No, we but have we have listeners in Australia. He is. He is Wolverine. He is Logan. Um, After seventeen years, yeah. Yeah. And you can't. Picture anyone else playing that role. You just you just can't. No. And it's going to be really hard if they ever recast Wolverine. To they'll have to go with like a younger one. Well, they you need to I mean? wait a long time. Mm. I think they'll need to wait at least There's a grace six period. to ten years. Mm. <clears throat> a Wolverine grace period. Uh, number three. Idris Elba as Heimdall. This was purely based on the fact that he was an African-American. That's it. I don't yeah. remember hearing anything about. It. That's all I heard. Hmm. Is that oh, well, well, you cast any? I mean, he's in. He's in Asgard. You know, they're Norwegian. You can't have a black guy in there. I'm like, Shut up. <laughs> yeah. It's freaking Idris Elba. He can do whatever the freak he wants, <laughs> right? Uh, number two, Chris Evans as Captain America. A lot of this. Again, was coming out of the movies he had in the past. Right. He did uh, comedies, romantic comedies, stuff like that. He was also, you know, Human Torch in Fantastic Four. Which mm -hmm. wasn't a serious role at all. He was kind of nope. a joke character in that joke movie. And no one, no one could really see it, but man, he made that character his own. He really did. And he looks freaking awesome in, in uh, Infinity War. With that beard? Yeah. I like it. And his, like, blacked-out suit that he has now. Oh, that does look pretty sick. looks so cool. Anyway. And then number one, Jennifer Lawrence as Katniss Everdeen. You know, I still don't like her as Katniss. I just don't like her. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We know your true feelings about J-Law. <laughs> right? Honestly, I didn't have any feeling, again, with this one either way, because I didn't ever read the books. I... I did, but the only reason I did, okay, I tried reading Twilight, and I made it six chapters in, and I'm like, oh, this is horrible. Or you but then, like, somebody, it? But, yeah, or pretty much. Fire? But then somebody was talking about Hunger Games, and I was just like, alright, I can't give it any criticism unless I've read it myself, you know? So I read the whole series, and, eh, they're, they're alright. Yeah, I mean, um, the, the first time I saw Jennifer Lawrence was on the Bill Ingvall show. If you anybody remembers that, um, and this is the last time I saw her, so I was like, "Oh, whatever." And I, I didn't read the books. I barely knew who she was. So if if they're a person, you know, a lot of the times the ones that on this list that they're getting the most skepticism about is because they've done quite a few other movies not in that genre. Yeah. You know? And then you get these no-name actors and actresses that come onto the scene and you like you don't have any like eh, either or. So if they knock it out of the park, you know, it's like, oh good for them. And if they don't, uh, yeah. okay. But it's like it was like you were saying, you know, they're they're actors. This is what they do. Yeah. You know, they can play other parts. Um and one of the reasons I found this list is because just a few days ago, it was confirmed that Kristen Wiig is going to be Cheetah in Wonder Woman 2. 
which she has never done an action roll before. She has not. I do remember... An excellent segue, Troy. Thank you. I do remember she uh, she has done some serious roles. Um, go check out the... What's that movie called? Skeleton Twins with her and Bill Hader. Also from Saturday Night Live. It's a freaking good movie. What's um, it called? The Skeleton Twins. I don't think I've seen that one. Are they brothers and si- brother and sister? They in are. Movie? Yes, I can see it. Yeah, they, it's it's really good. So she can be a dramatic actress, but action never seen it before. Uh, director Patty Jenkins has confirmed that Kristen Wiig from Bridesmaids and Saturday Night Live will play the villain Cheetah in the upcoming sequel Wonder Woman Two. Cheetah is the most well known of Wonder Woman's rogues gallery. Uh, Director Patty Jenkins is returning behind the camera for Wonder Woman 2 and is currently co-writing the script with David Callahan and DC Films co-chairman Jeff Johns. The producing credits in the film are still blah, 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 blah. Um, I I feel like they couldn't take this character, her, too far um, and make her look cheesy. You know, there's a fine line. You really want this character, Cheetah, to fit the Wonder World universe. It is a really fine line. Right? right. M- Mystique worked, you know, for the X-Men franchise, so it'll be kind of interesting to see how they actually do Cheetah. But I, I trust Patty Jenkins, man, because Wonder Woman is a fantastic movie. Yeah. It is DC's best movie so far. She's Agreed. making bank mm-hmm. on yes. this one, though. <clears throat> and so, rightfully so, if she saw something with Kristen Wiig, you know, who am I to say anything? Oh, speaking of Wonder Woman, real quick... Remember how we said we were going to see how Black Panther and Wonder Woman did against each other for like opening weekend and yeah. then overall. Uh-huh. We still need to figure out who, like, who is the winner. In we that. do, we do. I'll, I'll, I'll research it this week and go back and listen, and we'll figure it out. Sounds good. I like it. Um, from one DC character to the next. Uh, while fans might be waiting for years for the Nightwing movie or finding out the story behind Robin number 2 costume in the trophy case in Batman v Superman, it seems we will be getting a live-action version of our favorite former Batman sidekick, just on television and not on the big screen. The latest episode of the upcoming Titans television series has a very telling title, As thanks to the folks from Titan TV, we now know that the name of the episode 7 of season 1 is Jason Todd. This is very likely that means that at some point the first season of the show, Dick Grayson, played by Brenton Thwaites, will bestow the name and title of Robin to Jason Todd before becoming Nightwing. So that's going to be pretty quick, because within the first seven episodes, to yeah. make that segue, you know, it's, but it'll be kind of interesting to see how they do this. And I'm kind of actually looking, have you seen much on the trailers for Titans Mm-mm. at all? All I've seen is the costumes, and it look really freaking good. They, they do look pretty yeah. legit. Yeah. That yeah. Robin costume that he's wearing looks really cool. I haven't seen the trailer yet, and I only have one concern. I don't want it to end up like any of the other DC TV shows. Like, is it a little bit more dark, like more serious, or is it um, still like... Because <clears throat> Teen Titans has always typically been known as kind of a light-hearted, campy, mm-hmm. you know, fun, like, shoot-off or, you know, branch from the Justice League, you know, who's kind of more, they deal with with bigger, you know, out-of-these-world kind of issue problems, you know, where these guys kind of just focus on... Local stuff? Local stuff, yeah. Local crime. So, it'll be pretty, it'll be pretty interesting. That is interesting. I wonder if if Jason Todd will be kind of a recurring character then. Yeah, kind of similar to, like, Deathstroke. Yeah. You know, or something like that. Yeah, and maybe we'll eventually see him becoming Red Hood in a later season. That would be pretty cool. That would be pretty awesome. If they if they get enough money thrown at this show, I think it could be done really, really well. Well, I have a little news on another DC character, Green Lantern. Uh, it's time to, it's time to prepare for DC's Green Lantern movie to star Tom Cruise as Hal Jordan. 
Fans may still have a hard time believing Warner Brothers is moving forward with any movie adaptation of Green Lantern, let alone the proposed Green Lantern Corps ensemble. At a time when the future of the DCEU is uncertain, trying a certain swing at a superhero Ryan Reynolds still takes shots at sounds like folly. But then, the new leadership of DC Films isn't going to win over fans by sticking to safe bets. Not that a star of Tom Cruise's stature is a risk. I would have said risky business, but <laughs> that's just me. Um, there's more evidence than that tying Tom Cruise to the role of Hal Jordan. In fact, the new reports of WB looking to the current Mission Impossible director for a Green Lantern movie may reveal more than most fans realize. When you connect the dots, this potential star and director seem to make perfect sense for DC Films. The Green Lantern, Hal Jordan. Oh, and Green Lantern, Hal Jordan. Punctuation is hard. Um, not just on the set of such big sci-fi blockbuster, but behind the scenes. Giving it the best chance at giving DC another winner. Uh, whether or not the rumors prove true, it's a sign that the initial word of Tom Cruise being sought was more than just Hollywood gossip. Tom Cruise as Green Lantern. What do you think? He needs to stop doing action movies. He really does. Agreed. Like, he's past his prime as far as action movies are go. I think he's the kind of person that, that thinks he can still do it. Well, he's fit and for his age, but he's he not fit for someone who should be doing a Green Lantern movie. <laughs> he it kind of reminds me of, like, those one older guys, you know, that still want to play with the younger crowd when it comes to basketball. You know, yeah. and after they play like for about a couple of like a 30 minutes or so, they're over there popping some ibuprofen <laughs> on the sidelines and just kind of like a little winded, yeah. you know, or just kind of like get inside and just start pushing the younger kids around. Use that man strength. <laughs> but you know, I mean, it's not that Ben Affleck is young by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't know. I don't see... When I when I picture Hal Jordan, I picture a guy in his mid to late thirties. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. younger dude. He's a test pilot. You know, he's I, over I, five I picture, five. He's, I, yeah, he's over five five. Yeah, I picture <laughs> Nathan Fillion in Firefly. Yeah, right. Yeah. Some someone like that along Which those lines. Nathan Fillion has played Green Lantern. Oh yeah, voice actor. Cartoons. Yeah, that. I don't know. It doesn't seem like a right fit. We might be wrong and end up on a list somewhere. That's true. That's true. <laughs> and I, I don't know if it, it's not that we're saying that he won't do good at it because any role he's in, he is he's one hundred percent committed. He's a good actor. Yes. Yeah. Um. It, it's just I for the role. I don't know if he's the right choice. But I don't want Tom Cruise to die shooting a movie. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> Which know, he's getting to that age where it's entirely likely, especially because he likes doing his own stunts. I was going to say, if any actor is going to have that end, it's going to be him. Yeah. Because on his new Mission Impossible, he broke his leg. Yeah. Doing That's a stunt. True. So, yeah. From the elderly to the elderly. John, <laughs> <laughs> John Williams, arguably the greatest film composer who has ever lived thinks it's time he said farewell to the Star Wars franchise. After winning an Oscar for the first Star Wars movie, he went on to score every other movie in the main saga and also provided a theme for the upcoming Solo. However, he now tells radio station KUSC that J.J. Abrams' upcoming Star Wars Episode Nine will be the last time... He scores a Star Wars movie. We know J.J. Abrams is preparing one now for the next year, and I will hopefully do for him, and I look forward to it, Williams says. It will round out a series of nine and be quite in, uh, enough for me. Man, that's going to be that's gonna be kind of sad, and it's unfortunate because, not going to lie, there's that first opening scene in Star Wars, you know, the music that everybody mm -hmm. knows and loves, and then you've got a couple other iconic songs, especially the Duel, uh, Duel of the Fates, right? Prin you've got Princess Leia's Princess theme. Princess Leia theme. Yeah. yeah, you've got a Dark couple side. of those ones, but then for the most part, it gets drowned out in the background, yeah. and it's just provided background kind of mm -hmm. music, you know? But instantly recognizable. 
That's very true. As soon as you hear it, it's like, oh, that's Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And so, yeah. I mean, I'm sure he'll just kind of make it from go from Star Wars to like other movies, and Steven Spielberg's gonna like use him in anything and everything that he can possibly. <laughs> but it's still kind of like an end of an era. It is sad. It is sad. I mean, but it's also Star Wars is going a different direction with Disney at the helm. It's true. Who are they going to get now? Hans Zimmer? Yeah. Probably. Probably Hans Zimmer. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Danny Elfman? I like to see his Star Wars score. Yeah, right? <laughs> Couldn't hold a candle to John Williams. Uh, okay. Let's take another break. When we come back, uh, let's see. We're talking Disneyland. We're talking uh, Black Mirror. We got Barack Obama and Netflix. And zombie survival. Mm-hmm. Will your state survive the zombie apocalypse? Dun, dun, dun. Stay tuned. I was just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back right after this. Okay, come on. After these messages, we'll be right back. Thanks, Joy. Hi, everybody. This is Sean Ray. And John Irons. And we're the hosts of Cosmic Potato, the Super Fan Talk podcast. We're a show that has a little bit of everything. Yeah, we talk about movies and TV and cartoons, entertainment news, and every show has a different theme. That's right. We might discuss anything from our favorite bad movies to who would win in a fight between C-3PO and the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was episode 41, a classic uh, you can download that episode and all of our other episodes on iTunes and Stitcher. Uh, we're on Podcast Addict and, of course, on our website, CosmicPotato.com. It's special guests and movie nudes and geeky nerddom and nerdy geekery and lightsabers and Time Lords and Ninja Turtles all the way down. So check out uh, Cosmic Potato, the super fan talk podcast. And we're back. Yes, we are. Okay, so from one uh, John in Star Wars to another one, John Favreau to executive produce and write live-action Star Wars series. Lucasfilm is excited to announce that Emmy-nominated producer and actor John Favreau has signed on to executive produce and write a live-action Star Wars series for Disney's new direct-to-consumer platform. Favreau is no stranger to the Star Wars galaxy, having played roles in both the Star Wars The Clone Wars animated series and in the upcoming Solo, A Star Wars Story. Uh, he said, I couldn't be more excited about... Actually, who says this? Uh, oh, Kathleen Kennedy. I couldn't be more excited about John coming on board to produce and write for the new direct-to-consumer That's platform. Awesome. And otherwise, John's talking in the third person doing something. Yeah. <laughs> John brings the perfect... <laughs> It's funny if you think of it that way. John brings the perfect mix of producing and writing talent, combined with a fluency in the Star Wars universe. This series will allow John the chance to work with a diverse group of writers and directors and give Lucasfilm the opportunity to build a robust talent base. John Based. is looking forward to this. John says. <laughs> you know, the thing about John... <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this. I mean, this is the guy that basically started the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, with Iron Man? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was the director of Iron Man. He's the one that championed Robert Downey Jr. to play Iron Man. So, I mean, you well, know that... He's got talent. Yeah. And he has an eye for talent, so... He can also act. Did you he ever see that movie, act. Chef? Oh, yes. That was really well done. It's a though, great Netflix. movie. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I think only... Good things can happen with with John Favreau coming on, and I haven't heard any complaints. I haven't heard anybody saying, "Oh, he's going to ruin it. He's going to do this. Going to do that," which is surprising. So he's made quite a name for himself, you know. Mm-hmm. So he's made more of a name for himself behind the cameras than he ever did in front of them. I mean, oh, as an actor, absolutely. he was he was fine. Yeah, you know, kind of Louis C.K. tier. Yeah, right. Like the comedic relief. Like that's what he was in Iron Man. Was yeah. the comedic relief. Right. Yeah, but behind the scenes, he's he's really talented. Um, okay. So, you can now pretend you're in Disneyland on Google Maps. Yes. Next story. Um, <laughs> if you always wanted to visit Disneyland World, uh, visit Walt Disney World, not Disneyland World, in Orlando. <laughs> or they should make it Disneyland World. Disneyland World. Or Disneyland in California, but don't have 
or, or but don't like the idea of long lines, humid weather, and thousands of people. Then there's good news today. Google is bringing 11 Disney parks to Google Maps Street View, um, allowing you to virtually visit the tourist destinations from the comfort of your own home. There are a variety of parks to choose from, including Epcot, Magic Kingdom, the Hollywood Studios, and you can cruise around them freely to look at all the attractions and imagine you paid the entry free, the entry fee and secured your special Fast Pass tickets for all of the rides. Yeah, if I'm going to uh, go to Disneyland, I'm going to go to Disneyland. I don't want to look at it on Google Street View. Well, this yeah. is kind of like going to Disneyland with young children. So, like, you don't get to go on any of the fun rides, but you yeah. get to stand there yeah. and walk through the park mm-hmm. and see all the pretty lights. And this is like, uh, there was a, a, a Groucho Marx um, once said, I think he was talking, like, I mean, I'd be extremely appropriate, but I think he was talking about pornography. And why he doesn't get it. Okay. And it's like, it's like smoking a picture of a cigar. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. And this is the same thing. It, this doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> Just go, go Disney. to Disneyland. Yeah, go to an amusement park. Yeah. You know, go get out. Actually get off of the couch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I guess there are those that may not can't, ever can't have afford to go to you know to yeah. California or to Disneyland. May not have the opportunity, so it might be good for them. But for us, I mean, we're we're just a state over. A so hop, I mean, skipping the jump away. Yeah, you know, it's not hard for us. We could be there in like twelve hours if we drove now. Why so. don't we start right now, guys? Great. Well, let's go road trip, everyone. Finish the podcast. We're on our way. Speaking of states and. Zombies, or sure, aimlessly walking, wandering <laughs> a park. You know, there, there's a segue in there somewhere. Um, I brought I brought this list over, and it's U.S. states that are most likely, most and least likely to survive the zombie apocalypse. Because we all know that the zombie ap- apocalypse is going to happen. You know, if we learned anything from The Walking Dead, it's that it's going to happen. It's only when, not necessarily if. Yeah. So we thought it might be fun. I have a list here of uh, the the states that have downloaded this podcast the most in the last three months. So now we got to see how well they would actually do mm-hmm. to survive this zombie apocalypse. So working back, uh, first we have D.C., Washington, D.C. All right. As far as on the list over here, now I'm kind of on a, let's see, oh, Washington, 31st. That's... Oh, that's Washington State. I don't know if... It's not on there? I'm not even seeing that. What state is closest to Washington, D.C.? Um, there it is. District of Columbia. Number oh, 40, 49. There you go. Oh, man. They so, are not going to do well. Sorry, D.C. You are way down there. Now, what is this based on? Okay. So, there's quite a few different things that they've taken into consideration. So, this is based on fact. <clears throat> This is not made... Total know, fact. Science. Science. Yeah, exactly. So, military personnel, veterans, physical activity, uh, martial arts, survival skills, knowledge of zombies, laser tag, gun owners, obesity, paintball, Iron Man triathlons, and then you get your total score. Now, I know because of obesity, I know that's why Mississippi is 50th. (laughs) Because I lived down there for two years, and holy cow, those people are big. Yeah. I love you, Mississippi. I I joke because I care. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just looking out. Go take a walk. (laughs) Texas and all their deep fried things and whatnot. Um, So, the next on our list is Ohio. So, over here, Colin, if you're going to help me out. If we can't locate these guys. Oh, Ohio. Twenty oh, fifth. Not bad. They're in the top twenty five out of fifty one. You know, you're about average. Kind of in the middle there. All right. Uh, what about Arizona? We have a lot of downloads from Arizona. Um, oh, they- seventh. Seventh. Ooh, oh, man. seventh. Making the way up. Right Dang. in the top ten. It's too hot for zombies in Arizona. That's true. Pretty they just much. melt. Uh, okay. 
How about Alabama? I imagine they'll be down the list. Yeah, forty fifth. Oh, sorry, Sean, if you're listening. <laughs> your your state's way down there. <laughs> They're not going to survive. Um, okay, let's go to next on the list, Maryland. We got a lot of downloads from Maryland. 41st. And really, we just want to make sure that our listeners will survive so they yeah, continue to listen. exactly. That's the real reason. So far, it's only looking like our listeners in Arizona will survive. <laughs> All right, let's go to Washington proper, Washington State. We had already found that earlier. Um, 31st. Hmm. Okay. Oh, not bad. Not bad. They're, still, they're still in the red. How they had done this is they broken into two tiers. If you made the top 25 and then everybody else, pretty much from Texas on down, are going to <laughs> die <laughs> on this list. All right, uh, California. California, let's see. I imagine they'd be up there a little ways. Where Where are you guessing? If you had to pick a number for them? If I had to pick a number, I'd say, like, number 14. Let's see. Well, in Bass to 14. Oh, there we go. 38. Ooh. Yeesh. How are they so far down? I thought California would do better. It's the coastal cities, man. It's because the coast, they don't states. like playing paintball. They're 40th when it comes to playing paintball. Oh, all right. As well as laser tag. They're also 40, uh, 41st. So they're not really good with, with the shooting, with the guns. <laughs> exactly. Which okay. makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it does make sense. <laughs> um, you go to Oakland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, that city will survive. Uh, Minnesota. Um, 38th. Hmm. Uh, oh, they do like their fried food. <laughs> but, I mean, because you have the Mall of America, you've got all these like true. fairs. You know, it's true. Uh, and then uh, last, our beloved state, Utah. We almost made the top ten. We we <laughs> we're at number eleven. So where are we on the other stats? Then so we only get beat by Arizona. Yeah. Dang you, Arizona. Okay, what are our Utah stats then? So, uh, as far as, let's see, let's go break this down. Military, personnel, we've got, that makes sense, because we do have Hill Air Force Base, Mm -hmm. so 32, same with veterans. We're number two for physical activity. We're we're 40, yeah, we're 49th out of 50 with veterans. Oh, with veterans, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. We kick them out. We kick them to the curb. They probably go down to, like, Florida or something, you know? Number two, physically active. We're the we're number two. That's that's us. That's yeah. how something. is that? I don't know. <laughs> Clean living, I guess. We we well, I'm other... thinking that there's a lot of mountain biking, hiking, snowboarding, yeah, you know, lots of outdoorsy stuff. So martial arts, we're at forty third. Uh, Survival skills, we're at sixteen. Okay, that's not bad. Knowledge of zombies, we're 20th? at twentieth. Okay. Uh, laser tag, we're number two. Only, we only losing. This? I we're guess only losing to Wisconsin. <laughs> this lumps in with the act, the physically active, because everyone's just constantly laser tagging here. If you didn't know, yeah, I did a lot of laser tag when I was a kid. Same here. Uh, number eighteenth on gun owners. All right. All right. Number eighth in obesity. So we're pretty healthy. Number twenty eighth in paintball. Uh, thirteen and Iron, yeah, because we Iron do have Man. like a dirty dash, and we've got like mm-hmm. a, quite a few marathons. So our total is two thirty one altogether. Huh. Uh, well, so the top ten are Alaska, Wyoming, Colorado, uh, Idaho, New Mexico, Montana, Arizona, Nevada, New Hampshire, Wisconsin, and then us. Hmm. So there you have it. Have Our it. listeners aren't going to survive. Just uh, us in Arizona, apparently. <laughs> Wait, Ohio too. Oh, and Ohio. We got some. Old, yep. Yeah. Ohioans. They they made the cut right there. Yep. All right. For everybody else, good luck. Godspeed. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> we should. I, uh... I'm gonna like the harsh thing about the zombie apocalypse is like containing my excitement, you know, for when it actually happens. I'm just, I'm like, I was born for this. <laughs> I'm so ready. We should share this link on our pages so that our listeners can see where they stack up in the individual categories. Yeah, I like this. Yeah, it's a good idea. All right, um, so here in the United States, we have presidents, right? We do, that we do. Um, and one of those presidents was Barack Obama. 
He, that he was. Um, and he and Michelle Obama. See, I'm not sure. Like the listeners, we're probably wondering where you're going with this, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> They're in talks to produce Netflix shows. Barack really? and Michelle Obama, former president and first lady of the U.S., are in talks to produce and possibly host shows for Netflix. As hard as it may be to believe sometimes, time really does fly, and it's been over a year since the Obama family vacated the White House. Believe me, I know. <laughs> I'm very aware of how long it's been. Troy was actually like excited about daylight savings because then that meant that the president will be in office one less hour. <laughs> Um, since the exit of Barack Obama as commander in chief and the subsequent ascend ascendancy of Donald Trump to the same job, the Obamas have been fairly quiet on the public stage, seemingly choosing to stay out of the fray. This is a fairly common, this is fairly common for former presidents and first families to do. So as to let the new administration govern without direct opposition for the previous one. It looks like the Obamas have reached the point where they think they should return to the spotlight, though, which is, of course, sure to annoy their detractors. On the other hand, Barack and Michelle both remain very popular personally, and there are surely many people eager to see them weigh in on current events. That, that said, it seems fair to say that very few would have expected the Obamas to get into the TV business. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess... And there's there's more of that story, so you can go to Screen Rant and... Uh, to get the full story. And you can find it, yeah. It kind of goes into what might their what their shows might be. In that as, as long as they don't go the Osborne route, right? Kind of a reality, <laughs> like a reality t- show? Yeah. I don't know. I'd be oddly curious about that. I'm really? not exactly surprised about this, though. I mean, Obama was the first pre- president to get on, like... TV during his like he was on SNL right and yeah he was the first president to do that kind of stuff so he did quite a few other movies as well wasn't he in Transformers and some of the other ones no I thought he was like didn't they have like a cameo of him or something like that right was he did he did he make cameos in films he did he did yeah I remember thinking like doesn't he have something better to do than be in a movie <laughs> right now yeah. Now, 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 Troy is making sure it's not I, fake I news find out. here, yeah, right? Indeed. Fake news, okay? <laughs> Obama was never in any films. I've been in films. Obama's never been in Believe films. Believe me. Believe me. <laughs> I was in Home Alone 2. It was the best. That is the best Home Alone. It beat out all the other Home Alones. It beat out everyone. <laughs> uh, Macaulay Culkin and I are still best friends. Um, yeah, I'm going to look this up. I'm on IMDb right now. All right. Well, while you're looking that up, I'll go to our next story. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. From Netflix to Netflix. Uh, I was going to go with, like, a Black Mirror. You know, there's a, there's a segue there as well, but I thought I'd steer clear of that. Um, Black Mirror has been renewed for a fifth season on Netflix. The streaming service confirmed the re- uh, renewal in an email to Verg and a released criti- uh cryptic uh, teaser on Twitter with the tagline Be Right Back. Dun, dun, dun. It's kind of ominous. The fourth season of Charlie Brooks sci-fi anthology series premieres on Netflix at the tail end of 2017. The six-episode season explored topics like dating apps, uh, robotic dogs, and the Black Mirror universe itself. Some episodes were more successful than others, and as it uh, inter- no, let's see, enters into a new season, the series will have a have to decide how to keep pushing the boundaries. That's one of the things that they're kind of known, really well known for, is pushing the boundaries and kind of going a little bit further. They're reminiscent of Twilight, yeah. like the Twilight Zone, but they take they take subjects. And then they go, well, what if, you know, it was pushed to the extreme? Or what if it was, you know, you've got like this one episode. One of my favorite episodes was one um, where this lady, her recently departed boyfriend was gone. And they took his um, tweets and they took every post that he did ever posted on Facebook. And they like all of his text messages and all that data that he's kind of, 
you know, thrown out into the verse over his life, and they collected it, and she was able to text him, even though he was gone, yeah. she, she could text him. Then they took it one step further, because he'd also posted, you know, all these video clips and other voicemails and every other thing that he'd ever done, they'd brought it together so she was able to talk to him on the phone, even though he was dead, kind of... Yeah. And then they took it a step further. And they're just kind of, like, known for... That's what I mean when, like, they're pushing the boundaries. It's just taking a subject and just kind of blowing it up. The Prime Minister and a pig, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah. Did you, what did you think of that episode? I haven't seen it. I've just heard. It's very controversial because... I mean, I guess if you're late to the game, you'll have to watch it. But the person was released after... I mean, they were released before that actually took place. Right, and yeah. even though he did a good deed... He was kind of, nobody looked at him the same. Even his wife, like, turned away from him. And he's like, but I did this for, like, the country and for this person. And everybody was, like, you know, chanting for him to do this because they wanted her to be saved. But right. then when he did the deed, yeah, they all just like, oh, all right. Yeah, it kind of ruined his career. So, yeah. uh, so just an update on Barack Obama. He only has one acting credit to his name, and it's BET Presents Love and Happiness, an Obama celebration. I thought you were going to like Soul Train or something. <laughs> he was on Soul Train back in 1976. <laughs> no, that's that's it. That's all he's really? done. Yep. Perhaps they just use clips of him. That could be. You know what I mean? Like when they're talking about like a zombie apocalypse, and they're just like, you know, the president has declared a state of emergency, and you see the president. Yeah. You know. So maybe that's what I've seen. I don't know. All right. Um, Thanks for fact checking. You're welcome. You're welcome. So let's take our last break. And when we come back, we got reviews plenty. We'll be back right after this. After these messages, we'll be right back. Are you feeling nostalgic about your music listening needs? Do you like the tonal quality? that only a record can provide. Then go check out Lavender Vinyl, located at 123 25th Street, Ogden, Utah. Yeah, go talk to Kylie or Blake. They have a large selection of new and used records. Uh, they will also buy your old records, maybe the ones that are just sitting up there in the attic, gathering dust. And if you can't find anything, they'll be more than happy to pre-order it for you. Now you can always find them at Lavender Vinyl at gmail.com you can also check out their website lavendervinyl.com or give them a call on the phone like a normal person at 385-240-0336 be sure to tell them that World War G sent you now back to the episode and we're back uh, so we see things and then we tell you about the things we see. And then we also have other people that see them to make sure that the people that have seen them are actually giving you an accurate description. and About you know, what they've seen. About what they've seen. Yeah. Exa exactly. So let's talk about what we've seen now. <laughs> um, I did also see, I did kind of almost pull the Troy and saw two movies back to back. Mm -hmm. But uh, the first one I did see was Death Wish. And I was pleasantly surprised. I told you it was, it was good. Yeah, it was pretty decent. Like, there was a couple of cheesy, campy parts with it, especially with the guy where he's underneath the tr um, the vehicle. And he's like, don't kill me. He's like, I'm not going to. Jack will. Yeah, that's that was pretty cheesy. Yeah. But. but for the most part, it was a pretty solid movie, and it actually felt believable. I didn't think I was going to believe the fact that he was kind of, he played a doctor. Mm -hmm. But they did it pretty decent job with it and you could kind of see it happening you know like the, how the whole the setup mm -hmm. and like it's not like his family was it's not like his family was killed and then he immediately went on a revenge streak no it was like weeks and weeks of being frustrated oh yeah and then he's like you know what i've had it i'm gonna do this myself and but i didn't like how easily the detectives gave up on him you know, pursuing him <clears throat> as the potential killer. Like, at the very end mm -hmm. of the movie? Yeah. They're just like, oh, yeah, you're, it's okay, because they were bad people. You know, I... I don't know. I do kind of like that, but... I, I don't know. I wish that they would have had that 
detective be a father and so that he would have more like understanding. Right. But I don't know if he even had a family or anything. If it didn't like even that. show anything like that, yeah. But that would make a lot more sense if they did. Because he's like, okay, I can kind of relate, like, how difficult it would be, you know, mm-hmm. if you saw him with For his sure. daughter and his wife. But uh, overall, I mean, I would say it's a solid, like, two for myself, personally. I thought it was, I thought it was all right. All right. And I'll, I'll see that one eventually. Um, but uh, what I've been doing, which is taking up a lot of my time, is I've been playing Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. Yeah. Have you had, you've had to go from camp to camp to different location, right? Mm-hmm. To go collect different things. Now, we, we've talked about that we're fans of the Animal Crossing video game, the original one. Yeah. On GameCube. Um, and this that is. Was, that was the sole reason that Troy actually went out and, well, got a GameCube. Got a GameCube, yep. Yeah. Just for that game. Yep. And <clears throat> now I can pretty much play it anytime I want on my phone. Mm hmm. And that's awesome. Uh, the future is now. Yeah, the future is here. And yeah, so it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's it's a very relaxing game. Pretty simplistic. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what you get when you get with these games. And uh, I, I would pull it up, but it's undergoing maintenance right now. But I mean, it's just like it's just like the video game on GameCube. You go around, you you do favors for. Other animals, you... <laughs> you, you oh, when you put it that it's way. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's um, so funny. They need to come up with... You know how they did like a zombie uh, Oregon Trail game? Mm-hmm. They need to have an Animal Crossing one that's more shady. Like more Grand Theft Auto V mm. Animal Crossing. Like a... Or like a 70s exploitation. Yeah. You're doing favors for, like, you're a drug, part of the drug cartel, <laughs> you know, smuggling it in to other borders. You know, Mr. Noakes over there just like, come on, just give me, I just, I just need a hit. I just need a hit. <laughs> All drugged out. But yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, I've, I've, you, you, you fish and you knock fruit off of the tree and you pick up the fruit and, if I were just if I were just to explain to somebody what you do in that game, it would sound boring. But it's actually a lot it's of actually fun. enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. Which is so funny because you can get like a hundred bells for a piece of uh, for an apple. Yeah, yeah. And it, it would just be hilarious if they actually took that live action <laughs> Animal mm-hmm. Crossing live action. You just walk over to a tree, like kind of punch it. A bee swarm of bees come out and like attack you. <laughs> you like hit another tree and grab an apple and walk in and get money for it. You know, it was like, hey, I'll take that shirt for you over to these neighbors mm-hmm. over here. Like, all right. That's and actually you, an, an. That's actually give me an idea. Huh. Live then, action Animal Crossing, right? Anyway, yeah. If, I mean, if if you're you're a fan of the franchise, yeah. you'll appreciate this, that it's now on a pocket version. Yeah. You can download it and, uh, and enjoy it. So, all right. Um, Annihilation. Annihilation. So, this one is going to be kind of a difficult movie to talk about because if I say too much about it, it's going to give away a lot of spoilers. And that's why they've been so vague and cryptic on their trailers. But overall, this movie kind of reminded me of Interstellar meets Lost in Space. You get this group of ragtag explorers that are forced to go to figure out what happened at this cer- at this lighthouse or this specific area where mm-hmm. the alien invasion all took place. Then it starts getting kind of bizarre once they get into this universe. Like, all the, the people... They're kind of, they lose track of not just like of time, but they start losing track of themselves and they just start going, you're, you're not exactly sure what's all reality and what's not. And, but it is really reminiscent of Interstellar and it does have a really good, like interesting, like message at the very end that like, you just kind of like at the very end of the movie, you're just kind of like left there thinking a little bit. It's a, it's a thinker for sure. It kind of sounds like the arrival. Mm, yeah. Like, 
but like a more intense version. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could I could definitely see that. Especially there's this end scene when you like with the video camera and this. I, I can't give it. I can't get away. But the very very last like twenty minutes of the movie, you're just kind of like, oh geez, what's what's going on here? Like I don't know. It's one of those kind of as you're watching, it's just kind of unsettling a little bit. But I. I thought it was actually pretty well, pretty well done. Um, overall, I would probably, I'm probably sitting at about like uh, three and a half on this mm. one. Mm. Yeah, you guys will definitely have to check it out to see if I'm just seeing it because I love, I love me some sci-fi, mm-hmm. you know. And yeah, Natalie Portman. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I might need your your guys's help to give an accurate more accurate review well i love both of those things too so there you go and i'll put like a young spin on a review (laughs) okay a young hip spin because i have i feel like i have slightly different points of view when it comes to reviewing things than you guys you know usually it's the unpopular uh, opinion because you guys are so old but I, I will watch these movies. <laughs> well, I don't get the senior discount just yet. <laughs> Good lord. Wow. He's sitting over there with like his leather jacket and yeah. smoking well, a cigarette. See, like you he, old people don't know. He, he's the kind of fan that loves like everything that Adam... Anything that Adam Sandler touches is pure gold. <laughs> right? <laughs> he's just like, he can do no wrong. He is the best. At, he is like top... Two best actors of all time. I think that Big Daddy was Adam Sandler's last good movie. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll mm-hmm. actually no, I take that back. Click. I like Click. Mm. <laughs> okay, and there you have like a glimpse into Colton's like you know my psyche, <laughs> his psyche. Uh, okay, uh, Red Sparrow. Um, both AJ and I have seen this one. Yeah. This stars Jennifer Lawrence, um, Jeremy Irons, Joel Edgerton, and it's about a it's uh, a Russian ballerina who gets injured, and in order to keep her mom and the place that she's living, um, she has to go to work for the government, basically. Yeah, for her uncle. Yeah. Creepy uncle. Creepy uncle. <laughs> really creepy uncle. <laughs> very, 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 very creepy uncle. Um, man, I was really... I had high expectations for this one because everybody had talked about this is this is like the origin story of Black Widow that we've never gotten. Yeah. And it was disappointing. It was not that at all. No. And, and like, I'd even heard that there was going to be nudity. <laughs> oh, rush out and see that one. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just saying, like, I don't know. Uh, it, w- it was bad because that scene was kind of uh, bad. Not, not pleasant, yeah. Not, not, not pleasant. Not it wasn't wholesome. Pleasant to watch, yeah. No. That and also, okay, that <laughs> one scene where she's, like, sleeping... In the, because she kind of develops feelings for this American spy, yeah. right? Um, along in like trying to be on what you don't know if she's working for the Russians or Americans or who's where her ally, or like where her mm-hmm. allegiance lies. Right, she's a double agent or yeah. a triple agent, or, right? Yeah, <laughs> quadruple, quadruple agent. agent. <laughs> you just never know. Like even though I was kind of confused at the time. I don't even think she knew, yeah. and I don't think that we knew either. I don't think the writers knew. No, they're just like, oh, what should we do now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we got like thirty more minutes to film. Uh, I don't like, uh, yeah, get her naked again. Yeah, great. Let's write that down. <laughs> That's exactly what they did because, like, there's that one scene where she just goes out of the in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. You know, she's just like, "I'm tired, but I need to know where you're." You know, whether you're. What? How did she word it? She I was, don't remember. She yeah. She was just like, "Oh, I need to see if you would be loyal to me." So then she like just takes them <laughs> right yeah. then and there. Yep. Like, um, here's what I'll say about this movie. It tried to be a lot smarter than it was. It really um, did. 
There's not a whole lot of action in it. There, it's her I mean, Russian accent was horrible. <laughs> left a lot to be desired. Same with Jeremy Irons. Oh wow! When he even was... did one, sometimes he just gave up on it. Yeah, he just like half the like half the time he didn't even try. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now a spy movie can be good if there's no not a whole lot of action. Look at a movie like Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Right. It's a really good movie, but pretty much no action in it. This one, not a whole lot of action in it, and it's freaking boring because <laughs> the, there's not there's the writing's not that great. It's really dull. It's plain. It's flat. It's uh, just they were building it up to something that it wasn't even you know that it really yeah. wasn't. They think the twist at the end is is something interesting, and it's it's not. <laughs> And yeah, it's it's just it's not fun. It's not it's not a enjoyable movie. It's really long. I fell asleep they twice. Yeah, <laughs> they could have cut out like twenty minutes. Well, okay, I just more so nodded off for a second. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. where am I? Like that whole thing where she was at that school didn't need to be there. They could have no. taken that out completely. Yeah, which was so weird <clears throat> that I get that they were trying to say that do what we say, you know. We want just you guys to be soldiers and to have no other feelings and emotions, but that was yeah. just bizarre. Like, take off your clothes. Like, yeah. What? what? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So out of uh, out of five sparrows, sparrows, um, I'm at like one and well, a half. Same here. Yeah. Uh, exactly the same. Yeah. It's pretty Col- low. Colton's over there. Five. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that I would go see it, but your guys' reviews make me not want to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but a movie you did see. On a lighter note, yeah. uh, I saw Game Night, and if nobody knows what Game Night is about, um, it's about this guy played by Jason Bateman. He's uh, He and his wife are trying to have a child, but he's not... Um, His little soldiers aren't doing so well, and they determine that it's stress and that it's because he's highly competitive and his older brother has always beaten him at everything, and his older brother is beating him at life. Anyways, he has a game night that he hosts every week with his friends, and his brother shows up to one in his all-time favorite car, um, like, from his childhood, Mm -hmm. like, his brother bought it, and it's kind of a jerk move, but, uh... So, uh, the brother, as they're all leaving for the game night, he says that he wants to do a game night at his house that he's renting next week. And so, it's this big, you know, awesome mansion, super advanced. Of course, you know that he's going to go elaborate and all out on this, <laughs> what you're thinking, right? Yeah. So, so what the game actually ends up being at the, the brother's house the next week is... Um, someone in their group is going to be kidnapped. And this is like a company that he's working with that does this, and then they have to solve the the clues to find that person, and then whoever whoever wins the game gets the brother's car. So, wow, um, those are pretty high stakes. So things happen, and it doesn't exactly go as planned. The older brother is actually the one that gets taken, but not by the people who are doing the game. So, like, actual kidnappers. Right. And so the whole movie's about getting him back. And it sounds like an action movie, but it's actually a comedy because, I mean, it's Jason Bateman. Um, but it was actually super funny. I didn't know anything about it going into the movie. We just I just watched, like, ten seconds of the trailer, and I was like, yeah, let's go see it. Um, like, the, the comedy in it isn't forced. It's all, like, pretty witty and just out of the blue. Um, has a lot of twists in it, tons yeah. of surprises. Um, and, you know, I had a really good time. It's just one of those movies you can go and shut your brain off. If you want to have a good laugh, you go see it. Mm. Um, so uh, this is a constant state of being for you, though, right? Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> um, out of five Monopoly pieces, um, okay. I'd probably give it a three. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. Sweet. That is another one I've been meaning to check out. Same here. To check out. There, there hasn't been too many comedies. There's been a lot of, like, action movies, a couple of... More so just kind of, like, dramas, especially with the Oscars. Mm-hmm. You know, you need one of those movies that's a little bit more lighthearted yes. that doesn't take itself too serious. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, there you go. There you have it. Uh, <clears throat> so... 
Here's where you can find us. You can listen to all of our episodes at worldwarg.podbean.com. Uh, we're also on cosmicpotato.com. You can also find us on iTunes and the Google Play Store. On the social media, you can find us at facebook.com slash worldwargpodcast. We're also on Twitter and Instagram. Just search at wwgpodcast. You can find all of our merchandise at shop.spreadshirt.com slash worldwarg. Uh, you can email us anytime. Day or night. At worldwgpodcast at gmail.com. Also, don't forget, you can call the show or text it at any time at 385-240-1692. So, this has been World War G episode 168. That has been AJ. That has been Troy. And I've been Colton. Uh, stay geeky, my friends. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> That's all, folks.